The line is ready. You may fire at will. I thought we were the protectors of truth. Democrats, Republicans, you all lie. We, a small band of survivors, are on our way to the Steel City to find the resistance. Join us. Welcome to the Steel City Resistance with Senior Airman Ward Miller and the ironclad voice of Pittsburgh Hutch Jr. laying down verbal C4 to blow away the lies and the political tomfoolery. Your papers have been cleared. Welcome to the Steel City Resistance. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Steel City Resistance. My name is Hutz Jr., and I am located deep down in the bunker in the city of Pittsburgh. I'm Warden Miller, also in the city of Pittsburgh here on Mission Control, and we have a really long show today. So, well, we have a lot of stuff to talk about, a uh, long way to go, and a short time to get there. So, Yeah, it's going to be a, an exciting one for sure. I mean, it's... Uh... There's a lot of things going on, and and uh, and we're going to try to try to hit all of them. I don't know how successful we're going to be, but we're going to give it a shot. With uh, no video last week, I'm sure that you're glad to see our smiling faces once again. Uh, that's a joke, though, really. Uh, I was listening to the radio a couple of days ago via computer, like I always do, and uh, I heard Michael Savage starting to make an argument for a third party. And I always, people our age, uh, conservatives our age, I think what we do is, at least I do, at any uh, time there's a, a mention of a third party, I always uh, remember Ross Perot. And that, uh, that kind of takes it away a little bit. Yeah, because we, what ends up happening is... It, you end up splitting the party, you know, so the the one party isn't as strong. So the only way to actually do it and do it right would be for there to be four parties, one uh, Republican, one Democrat, one ultra conservative Republican and one super liberal Democrat. And if you did it that way, the, you'd split the votes correctly. But the way it is now, if you'd bring in a super conservative uh, Republican Party, you'd have a bunch of people jump to it, but the Democrats would always win the vote because you're splitting the vote yeah, between he, the two Republicans. You would have to get you would have to get a faction of the Democrat Party on board, uh, and and I think uh, the way, if if it's even at all possible, I'm I'm disgusted with the Republican Party myself. I mean, I don't know if you've been reading behind the scenes. But oh yeah, they're doing a lot of. Uh, they're freezing people out. I mean, they're freezing voters out. They're freezing conservative Republicans out. Uh, I think the way you go about even deciding if it's possible is you take the disapproval rate of Congress and you mobilize. They're like 14% approval rate. Do you know, <laughs> here you go, here, here's a little bit of trivia. Do you know that telemarketers have a higher approval rating than Congress? I believe it. I mean. It, it was just on the news today. And it's one of those trivia things that gets drilled into my head that I'll never freaking leave. <laughs> but that's what it is. Their appro Congress's approval rating is lower than telemarketers. Yeah, I believe it. I mean, uh, when you look at, uh, I read an article. I don't know if you saw this. It was, it was flying through the interwebs, and I posted it somewhere. Uh, but there was a, a newspaper journalist that was writing his final column. And he basically said, you know, there's 535 people ruling over 300 million people that don't approve of them and he said you know if the if the 535 people wanted a balanced budget there would be a balanced budget and he went on to list all these things that if they wanted to fix entitlements entitlements would be fixed and it just got me to thinking that uh we're in a pickle i mean yeah yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it, it's not a matter of can you. It's a matter of will you. We. It, it's not like, you know, any any of this stuff is, uh, 
is new territory for anybody. We've all been there. We've all seen it. We know what, what they're talking about. And for, you know, it, and it's one of them cases where the, the, all the senators and all the congressmen are what's in it for me. I'll sign your bill to cut, uh, to cut, um, you know, the deficit, but I want, uh, uh, you know, 200 million in there so that we can get new stoplights. So I can put a train station over here where nobody gets on it. Exactly. I mean, because my buddy's a train station maker and he gave me money for election. And uh, I mean, I think anybody serious uh, would start trumpeting term limits. I mean, term limits is the solution. It really is. I mean, at least it's a, it's a, the only thing about term limits is you almost have to decentralize it. It it should be taken out of DC. These people should have offices in their home district. uh, And Skype ought to come up with something that they can telecommute. Well, really, I mean, that's how we do this show. Right. right? I mean, we're, we're doing it on Skype right now. I don't, all that means is I don't have to, you know, sludge over to, to Hutch's house or he doesn't have to come to my house and we can still get the show done in, in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, we can still see each other face to face and we don't have to, you know, we can still, you know, have, carry on conversations. Now, um, Skype gives you the ability, if you pay for it, to have as many people on it as you want. I mean, there's tons of, of tools out there to, to do exactly what you're talking about. But I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the answer is, but I know that what we got ain't. No, I know, I know what Harry Reid's answer is. He got implicated in a bribery case. There's a guy that's uh, that, that copped a plea to this bribery case, and uh, or he copped a plea to another. I, I forget what his crime was. He was uh, I can't remember, but it was some kind of fraudulent fraudulent sales or something, and, and there was a federal investigation, and he bribed Harry Reid to make it go away. I don't know. I don't. I, I'm actually to the point where I'm starting to think these people are over the above the law. You know, I mean, if if you have this Benghazi and I mean just these solid gold freaking crimes, and nothing's happening to anybody, I mean that makes you lose faith a little bit. I, I'd love to see somebody like Harry Reid, if he, if he is guilty, go to freaking prison. Well, you know, here's the thing. Where are you going to hear about it at? Oh, you got a point there, but I mean, you know, I mean, the the only the only uh, television network that that may that may that may comment on it would be Fox, and the left has done everything that they can possibly do to take credibility away from Fox. So if you don't see it on mainstream media, if you're not seeing it on ABC, NBC, CBS, you're nobody's going to know about it, right? And so it'll just go away, the same as. Fast and Furious went away. The same as Benghazi went away. It, you know, it, it's one of them things. That's the way it is. Now, something about about Fast and Furious that that's killing me. I'm gonna skip topics a little bit here, uh, Ward. But uh, with the anti Second Amendment diatribe coming out of the media and out of the press, an interesting tenet of that has has happened. To where they're speaking about making gun trafficking a more felonious crime. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, man, hold on. You mean the same thing that the Attorney General did in Fast and Furious, gun trafficking? You're talking about making that a stronger offense or a worse offense? And you did it because you wanted to take away Second Amendment rights. I mean, that, that just blows me away that they are that, uh, I don't know. I, when this is over, I'm telling you the history books. You know, I said the same thing with Clinton, too. And some people wrote books, but they still love him. I mean, he comes on the scene, and, and he's just worshipped and adored. It's disgusting. He's the hero of the Democratic Party, dude. That's disgusting. I'm telling you, the party's changed so much to have uh, to have such either, either such bad memories, or maybe they don't know. You know, maybe they don't have a clue. They think the guy's a good guy and cheating on your yeah. wife's cool and all that. Yeah, I mean, he only perjured himself in front of Congress. I mean, hell, Eric Holder did the same thing, and nobody even said a word about that. No, it's not. Our attorney general, our sitting attorney general, was found in contempt of Congress. And he had perjured himself. Yeah. 
I mean, it's, he perjured himself, and and nothing nothing happened. By and the king, the king silenced the the documents. He read out, you know, he he made the documents to where no one could see him. Yeah, he on a gun running case. Privilege. Now, here's my question: How can you claim executive privilege on the documents when he supposedly never saw them? He never knew anything about Fast and Furious, so how can he claim executive privilege? We need some Republicans that, that are serious in Congress. These people are not serious. I mean, it, I, it, it blows me away. I have not heard very many senators or, or representatives saying anything about this assault on the Second Amendment. I haven't. I know there's ones that, that won't support it, but you would think somebody would be screaming. I mean, you hear Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz is a new, he's a rock star. I don't know if you've been listening to him lately, but that guy, yeah, get, he gets it 100%. We need some more people like him. Now, there was a, a tragedy happened uh, over the weekend. Uh, Aaron Schwartz, one of the co-founders of Reddit, uh, apparently uh, has assumed room temperature. I had to borrow that from Rush. I just always wanted to say that. No offense to the guy or anything. But uh, you know a little bit about this guy. Yeah. Um, he was actually one of the, the, the I, I won't, it's hard to say, founding fathers of the Internet. But he, uh, you know, Reddit came about later. I mean, he also was one of the guys that helped invent RSS, uh, really simple syndication, you know, basically how you get our show. Um, you know, he was one of the guys that did that as a teenager. He was only 26, you know, so how long has RSS been around? Right. You know what I mean? So, I mean, he's, he's been, uh, very, uh, active in, in the scene. And apparently he, he had, uh, you know, being a, a you know, genius. <laughs> yeah. A, a computer super genius. Uh, apparently, you know, he was one of the guys that uh, founded Creative Commons. You know, the basically how we released the show under Creative Commons, which basically says, hey, you can replay the show on any venue you want. You know, we, you know, but we license it, and we license it through a Creative Commons license. That came from Aaron Schwartz. I mean, that that was part of his thing was the internet should be free. Everything on the internet should be free. You know, it, it, that's what. That's the idea behind it, and, and that's kind of what got him in trouble, because he downloaded a bunch of document, well, a bunch, four million articles from a subscription-only service. He hacked in, downloaded them, and then I guess he posted them, and they were charging him with. Uh, I mean, the, you know, the the attorney general took the the harshest charges that they could do. And they hit him with it, and he was facing uh, a couple million dollars fine, uh, 30, uh, 30 years in prison. Jesus, you know. that's a, that's and, a... and the thing was, there was actually nobody harmed. I mean, it wasn't like he hacked into some, you know, hacked into, you know, uh, a uh, you he, know power station and shut. He power took a off. server. He took a server in MIT, and connected it into the intranet in MIT in a closet. And was downloading all this stuff from MIT. I mean, it's like who thinks of that, man? <laughs> These guys. I mean, that's the thing. They're 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 super geniuses, and you know. And the the thing is, and I actually wrote a, an article about this a long time ago uh, about hackers. And you know, it, it wasn't until the until Hollywood deemed the hackers, you know, a bad word. Uh, a hacker is someone who is interested in the technology, you know, and, and uh, when people first start golfing, they're called hackers. It's the same thing. It's, it's an enthusiast. It's not, it, it's not a dirty word, you know, for, for someone to be a hacker, that means that they are a computer enthusiast or a golf enthusiast and the media and Hollywood try and make, make it so that, the, the name hacking has become synonymous with bad activity and, and nothing could be further from the truth. Um, you know, the, 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 the reason that we have computers today are because of hackers like, you know, uh, Steve Wozniak, because he sat there and he was an enthusiast and he figured out how to build a computer. If it wasn't for hackers, 
you know, a, a lot of the stuff that we have today, we wouldn't have. We wouldn't have search engines. We wouldn't have the ability to, to, to do a radio show over, you know, a radio slash video show over the Internet and distribute it to, you know, whoever wants to get it. You know, all this stuff is made available because of hackers. Yeah, good thing. You know? Now, I promise that, that I will not post another thumbnail of Al Sharpton as the show's thumbnail. I promise I'm not going to do that. I was going through the shows, and, and there's some ugliness out there. But uh, <laughs> Big Al wants Big Barack on Mount Rushmore. Can you imagine that? This failure, who has yeah. he has he has done more damage, and we're starting to find out now, too. Thank you, finally. People are starting to feel the pain with these paychecks. Yeah, and there, what's going to happen is, you know, you know, as more and more people, you know, I, I just hope that they remember, you know, that they have a long memory because that's what it's going to take. Yeah, we you were know? talking before the show about that, about these it, going right back and voting for the idiots again and just stupidity, man, really. Yeah. Uh, can you, you see know, his the, face up there, though? That would, that would be almost like a comic book. Well, like I said, have to get the I, ears. I posted a, a, a picture on, uh, I, I don't know if I did it on, on our Facebook or if it was on mine, uh, that said uh, something to the effect, uh, you know, because they, they, he was saying that Brock now favors, because before it was Lincoln, you know, he, he was. Oh, yeah, he, he's, doing, he's doing his, his inaugural address on Lincoln's birthday. He's using Lincoln's Bible for the inauguration or something like that. And it's uh, this guy, is he's a, uh, what do you call it? He's one of those ones that's, uh, you know how me, I lose the word. He's so yeah, into he, himself. He, he's infatuated oh. with, with uh, thinking that he's like Lincoln. And, and uh, he's Al like, Sharpton compared him to, you know, Teddy Roosevelt. Compared and, him to Lenin. And, yeah, well, I had posted a picture on... Uh, on my Facebook that says, you may be cool, but you'll never be Teddy Roosevelt riding a moose cool. <laughs> so until Brock rides a freaking moose into the river. Have you ever it, seen the it, picture? It, have you ever seen the picture of him riding that girl's bike with the helmet? Yeah. <laughs> they, Unfortunately, yeah. They showed a side-by-side -side of him riding that and Alan West riding a Harley. It was, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like night and day. Boy, gun sales are really surging, and I keep hearing reports it's going through the roof. You're looking at, at, at pictures of gun stores with empty shelves, you know. Well, you know, because because of the rhetoric that's coming out of Washington, nobody knows exactly what's going to happen, you know. And it's, it, it's one of them cases where, you know, I, I take this back to Clinton, okay. You know, you got to understand what the definition is. You know, what the definition of is is, you know, where they're saying, no, this this has nothing to do with uh, with regular hunting weapons and <laughs> this, that and the other thing. Yeah. But th this only this is only part of, uh, you know, assault weapons. OK, well, what's an assault weapon? Yeah, we well, co we covered this if, extensively. Yeah. If it has a magazine, if it has. this, yeah. So based on what definition they use, uh, a pump shotgun that you could use for hunting, you know, if it holds more than more than three rounds, could be technically classified as an assault rifle, uh, an assault weapon. So that's that's the thing you got to watch is actually what their def definition of is is, what the definition of a an assault weapon is, you know, it, it, is it just something that's fully automatic? Well, that's already illegal. Well, one of the thing, one of the definitions of an assault style rifle is sold the hell out. Yeah, they are fifteen. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's they're selling them as fast as they can make them. And I and, I looked online. And the thing is, the AR-15 is a semi-automatic rifle. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I had a, I a, had a one, fine rifle. It's a it's an outstanding rifle, and I had one for for four years. You know, assigned to me. Yeah. And, you know, the difference between the AR-15 that I carry, well, the M-16 that I carried and the AR-15 is the AR doesn't have rock and roll. That's it. And, I mean, you and, look on, the, you look on the magazine well of a lot of those rifles, and it said AR-15. Yeah. There's a lot of them stamped like that that were just 
converted to automatic. And now they don't even have automatic. Now they have three round burst. Uh, Which is better because automatic sucks. Yeah, automatic. You can't hit shit in automatic. No, not really. Um, yeah, and I looked online. I checked. I checked, and two, two, three ammunition, green tip ammunition, which has a steel core inside to aid in penetration. It's not armor piercing, but it's penetrator, and it is up to a dollar a bullet. Yeah, that's what they're going to do. They're going to tax the hell out of no, out just of just house. just just supply and demand. It's up. Oh, not well, a, yeah, because but they're going to go after it too. They're, they're going to try after ammunition. And oh, they, they go said after clips. They were saying they wanted background checks for ammunition. You know, to, the whole thing is it's not going to work. I mean, there's going to be. I've seen I've seen county sheriffs saying they're going to arrest federal officers if they come in the district trying to do anything about guns. I mean, there's going to be a backlash here. Oh yeah, Sheriff Joe already said he went and bought some ridiculous amount of, of uh, AR-15s for, for his uh, deputies. I'll tell you the uh, the vast majority of law enforcement, and I would probably say most of the military, isn't buying this, man. I mean, now some of the inner city cops they will, because they're just as brainwashed as everybody else in the inner city. Not all of them. I know a lot of them that are conservative. Well, the thing is, I mean, you look at the places that have the the most stringent gun laws. They're the ones that have the most homicides. And the most Democrats. Exactly. I mean, but... I, you could trace it to that. You really can. The city, yeah, you can, but to take taking parties out of it. Taking parties totally out well, of it. Well, I, I meant more... Based on law, the, 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 the places that have the strictest gun laws that take, the, take guns out of the hands of lawful people and have all these, you know no gun zones and gun free zones and whatnot they're the places that have the most shootings they're the places that have the i mean chicago has more casual had more casualties last year than afghanistan than a fucking war zone well i mean uh, you can't take politics out of it because they're the ones that make those rules no i understand what you're saying hutch it's, I, I, yeah. totally, I, I totally understand if that. you go to a, a republican area a republican city they don't have those rules, and therefore they don't have those deaths. Yeah, you're, you're right. <laughs> it's but, ridiculous. But my point is, Obama came out and said that Chicago was a per, was a model example oh, I know. For, for gun control. They, be, they believe in this. They do. And, and there's and, more people killed in Chicago every day than there is in most places in a month. I wrote a post. I can't remember exactly which day it was. But since the... 26 people were murdered. This is a couple days ago. Since the 26 people were murdered in Newtown, 26 more people in Chicago have been killed. And they're not even covered. They don't even get a news story. They're young black males and they get nothing. Nothing from yeah. the media or the politicians. It's horrible. Because, you know. It's a tragedy. They, they expect that. You're absolutely right. I mean, the, the, the thing is, the people in Chicago should stand up and start demanding, you know, that. You, you know, you can't rely on the police. Three quarters of them are for gun control. It's, it's suicidal. Absolutely, because the police know that they can't be there, you know, within seconds. Christ, the, the, the sad part is you can get a pizza delivered quicker than you can get a cop to your house. <laughs> and half the pizza delivery guys are going to get robbed. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, Eric sent us an email. Ward, uh, there's a new bill being brought forward uh, to get the United States out of the United Nations. And ladies and gentlemen, if you go on the show notes links page, it's the last entry is the link to where you can go and chime in on, get your voice heard about that bill if you uh, believe in that cause, which I do. I, I don't think we have any business in the U.N. You know what? And, and you can pretend that you're a Democratic voter and, and vote twice. Yeah. Because <laughs> we, we need to be out of the U.N. There's, and I've said that a million times on this show. I, there's absolutely nothing that the, that the UN buys us except heartache and tragedy. Yeah, it's it's horrible. It's that that organization's anti-American, no doubt about it. And at the very least, we should re-headquarter re-headquarter the UN in Benghazi or somewhere. No, to send them to Copenhagen. Or Chicago. <laughs> no, get them get them the hell out of here. Yeah. Send, send them send them to Copenhagen, something like that. Send them to the Hague. You guys go there. We're not even going to play in your, your your sandbox anymore. So when you guys decide you're going to go and, and invade a country and, and defend it or whatever, you guys go do that. 
Uh, we're not we're not playing your game. We're not going to be the team of the UN anymore. Right, I agree. Uh, Anti-Israel group. Uh, well, the thing is, they want they they want us to be, uh, you know, they don't want the U.S. to be, you know, warmongers and you know, all the all the Democrats want us out of all these places, but yet the UN tells us, hey, you got to go enforce resolution, blah 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 blah. So we're in the middle of shit. You know what? That that goes to no. We're not playing your game anymore. Get the hell out of Dodge. Move on. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, what do we got here? We don't get a whole lot of comments on our posts on the show on the website. Uh, so when we do, we get some, but I mean it's not it's not rampant. Uh, but Linda commented, "Thank each of you patriots. I live on the east side of Pennsylvania in Lancaster." area thank you all well you're quite welcome linda and you can go to her website i don't know if that's her website so i'm not going to say it no i don't think it is okay anyway thank you linda we appreciate it and hope you uh listen to the show i and tell, tell all your friends about us yeah i commented on the website to please pass it around there's a lot of uh a lot of conservative people out there i lived out there for some time in lebanon county and the adjoining county uh, so that's good. That's good. We got the Pennsylvania Dutch set on the on the audience. Good deal. Ladies and gentlemen, your weekly jihad report, January 5th to January 11th. 37 jihad attacks. Five Alwa Akbars, 209 dead bodies, and 358 critically injured. The religion of peace, ladies and gentlemen. One poor body at a time. Man, what's going on with uh, WikiLeaks? Holy smokes, this is getting deep. Yeah, well, it's been a while since since we've even talked about WikiLeaks. And, and just to catch the audience up, WikiLeaks is a website that got uh, some conf some highly confidential, sensitive military information from a uh, little goofy a, a private <laughs> uh, named uh, Bradley Manning who supplied. WikiLeaks, which is a website with all this uh, information, you know, and so his trial came up, and one of the the tenets of the trial is the government saying that WikiLeaks material was found at Obama Osama bin Laden's safe house, so they're implying that you know you know because he was uh, he was saying well that uh, that information should be free and everybody should have it and da 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 da. And apparently, Ben Laden was trying to figure out a way to use that against us. Of course he was. I mean, the uh, judge that's overseeing this, this colonel, notes that the Justice Department is carrying out an investigation of WikiLeaks to determine whether Assange or his associates, that's who this guy delivered it to, can be charged. Julian with... Assange. Yeah, he's, he's got, I think he's got political asylum in Belgium or yeah, something. Yeah, he's in some embassy somewhere or something like that. Uh so they want to charge him with aiding the enemy. He adds that prosecuting WikiLeaks would set a dangerous precedent for news organizations like the Times that frequently obtain and publish information the government considers classified. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I think this one here, that you have to take it incident by incident, cause and effect. I don't think you, you, you take down, I don't know, though, it's because it was military. I, he was in Iraq when he did it. You know? He was in a, he was in a combat zone, handing out restricted military classified information that's giving aid and comfort to the enemy in time of war, no matter how you look at it. Yeah, I agree. But I mean, like the assumption. If, if it was for nothing else, it was to embarrass the United States. Yeah, he was. <laughs> I don't see how he got away with how he did it that long. I mean, there's uh there's there's two internets, man. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> there's more than yeah. two, but. Uh, that's well, as far as I'm you know, going with there's, it. There's all kinds of, you know, it, it's one of them things where, you know, a lot of people, well, 99% of the people, on, you know, in this country think that the Internet is nothing but Facebook and email. Then there's other people who understand how IRC works and Internet chat relay and different uh, backdoor stenography type things. And, you know, and, and there's a very seedy uh, layer to the internet that you know bad guys live at and there there's th thank 
thank goodness that there's people like Morpheus and the Jester, you know, who are hackers for good, who go after these jihadi websites, who, you know, that, that that's what they do, you know, and, um, it's a good thing we have people like that yeah. who are willing to to step up and go after these people. Then on the other hand, there's people as talented on the other side that are taking oh, sure. that are taking people down. So it's it's definitely the new the new battlefield, no question. Uh, you know, I heard a story to lead into this next one. I heard a four star admiral say that the whole Benghazi operation was all a setup to get Ambassador Stevens kidnapped so they could trade him for the blind sheik before the election, and it just went bad. Because, I'd heard the same thing. Because of the, those CIA guys. You know, so now... That's why they were told to stand down, because the administration actually wanted Stevens kidnapped so that they could save face and still trade for the blind sheik. Yeah. When Stevens got killed... Because the CIA guys and the ex seals refused to stand down, that's where you know their whole plan fell. You know, went to went to hell. I mean, Morsi from Egypt has been uh, publicly haranguing the U.S. to have mercy on the old blind sheik back in September. I mean, Representative Peter King from New York confirmed to the New York Post at the time that the Egyptian government had asked for his release and that the request was being considered by the Obama administration. And then I heard a segment, I actually read transcripts of a segment of Russia's show where he said, make no mistake about it, he's going, they're going to give him back. So that's something that we need to pay attention to because that's treasonous. That's, that, he almost blew, he did try to blow up the World Trade Center. Remember those, well, remember those pictures of those people coming out of there with all that black smoke in there? Yeah, because they, they took a... a, a uh... A van or a delivery uh, truck. Uh, yeah, it was a delivery van f full of explosives into the basement, into the parking garage of the World Trade Center, and detonated it. And it it wasn't the the blast wasn't strong enough to take the towers down, but it was strong enough to to clear the place out. And there were people that got killed. Yeah, there was. Uh, the, the half dozen or so. Apparently, the place caught fire because all these people had black smoke like trails going up their nose, kind of like Stevens did. Yeah, but I, I watched. In fact, I watched an interview with Peter King today. And he said, you know, the, there were, uh, in fact, the blind sheik's son was one of the protesters in Egypt protesting against our embassy. No doubt in my mind. I mean, but uh, you, you never know what, what these guys are going to do. I mean, it's, it's painfully clear. I think we're past the stage when we look like a clown when we say Obama supports Muslims. Because he's done it so many times over and over again. I don't know what it is about Democrats. I don't know why Democrats do that. I could never figure that out. That's the biggest suicidal thing for a Democrat. Democrats are the liberalist. They have the liberalist lifestyles. Well, the thing they, they is, they, up. they have this... Hutch, it's the mentality. It's the, well, if I be nice to you, you're going to be nice to me. <laughs> They're going to be and, the first one. Is, these people, the, the, these Islamists... And the rest of the world see that as weakness. Gay people, wake up. They are going to hang you from a crane as soon as they find out. These people kill me. They'll be the first to go. The, the liberal people, the, uh, whatever, let them go. They're, <laughs> they're not going to fool me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they say we're going to give him back. So we'll, we'll, have to, uh, we'll have to watch and see how that develops Uh it seems like he's doing everything else. You know, Trent, I mean, not Trent, John Kerry, who's going to be the Secretary of State. Out of those three guys that are up, uh, Hagel, Kerry, and uh, what's the other guy's name uh, for CIA director, him? Yeah, I know who you're talking. I can't I, Kerry's the one that's going to definitely get get uh, selected. He'll be a well, they, they'll, Yeah, they'll approve Kerry with no problem. Kerry, Hagel's going to have problems. So is the other guy. The other guy's going to have real problems. I posted something on our website about him, too. That's a, that's an Islamic son of a bitch right there. I mean, when he talks about Jerusalem, he uses the Arabic word for it. And I don't even remember what the word is, but I damn sure remember the article or the speech. Uh, yeah, he's something. Uh, but then uh, Hegel, Hegel's just all ate up. They're, they're finding more stuff on him every day. Apparently, he was tyrannical with his staff, and his staff's starting to come out. 
about what a jerk off he is. So we'll see uh, see what happens there. Uh, yeah, denial is a river that runs through 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, but the B- Obama administration's tone-deaf acts of jihad appeasement speak for themselves. Concern is more than warranted. It's de rigueur, whatever that means. Uh, now, I don't know if you noticed something that uh, happened word with uh, uh, something being on our show first and then making its way out to the... I love that about this show. It happens almost every week. Uh, but this came again, if you remember, the first time, I think it might have been the only time that we ever featured a video like playing a video in the middle of the show on the on the on the video show and mm-hmm. we and we played Eric Holder when he was saying that how he was uh thinking that we should brainwash people so that yeah. gun owners could be the same way as smokers outside cowering in the corner smoking yep you know well it's out there again man i mean it's uh it's there and and here's the thing how can he be at the table for obama's gun control push when he was behind Fast and Furious, which led to giving automatic weapons, which were definitely assault-style rifles, to drug cartels in Mexico. It's unreal. I mean, and his attendance at the talk suggests he'll have a major role in, in, this, uh, in this whole thing, and we know how he feels from his own mouth. I mean, he is an anti-gun, which to me, it makes you an anti-American. If you are anti-gun, you do not understand the concept of this country. There's only one reason why this country is the way it is, and it's because of our Constitution. You know, it, there, there's no other country like this. You know, we're going to have a the myth about about all the violence here. We're going to have a segment on that at the end. You know, we've got that covered, left, right, left. But this uh, Eric Holder just, uh, but I don't know why, but gun, gun, oh, yes, I do. Gun rights groups are suspicious of Holder's involvement and fear he is pushing the White House toward tougher restrictions on gun ownership and increased penalties for illegal firearms. What's an illegal firearm? You know, that's going to be the definition that, of is, is. That's right. That's what the definition of is, if it's, is. If it's, it, not, if it's not a twenty two single shot, it's it's illegal. If something, if it can fire a projectile, it's illegal. <laughs> I'm telling you. I wanted to say, I heard, uh, I heard Governor Cuomo, who's a prick. I can't, I don't like that man. But I heard Governor I Cuomo really talking to listen, I'm going to tell you. He's talking, and this is in no way, let me put this right out there, a disclaimer, this is in no way a threat to Governor Cuomo. So let's just be clear about this. I'm using this as an educational tool. He sat up there and said, "Who? I, he's screaming, he's mad. At his state of the state address or whatever. I don't know anybody that needs 10 rounds to shoot a deer. Who needs a magazine with 30 rounds to shoot a deer? And I was wishing I was in the audience because I said, it's not about shooting the deer, asshole. It's about shooting you. You know, it's about taking the government back. And, of course, I didn't say that at that time. And I will will reiterate that there was no threat at Governor Cuomo at any time. I was using that hypothetically. Well, Cuomo is the same guy who said that there's no reason 19-year-olds need to carry weapons. Yeah. They're not responsible enough to carry weapons. And yet Ni- most of our are military awesome. are 19-year-olds who are carrying weapons, and they're doing it in the most patriotic, uh, heroistic fashion ever. And so that just goes back to he has no idea what's going on around him. He, he, he doesn't understand that predominantly most of the military are 19 year old kids and when they're deployed it's not like the old days when they're deployed they carry their weapons with them 24 7 loaded yeah as well they should i mean they're they're in combat zones and 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 etc so for for cuomo to come out and say that i don't understand why they should be carrying weapons you know, there, there's no need for a, a ni- you know, 19 year olds aren't responsible enough to carry weapons. I challenge him to, to, to go to uh, Paris Island, South Carolina. I challenge him to go to, uh, you know, any of the any of the training bases that, that this country has, any of the military training camps that this country has, and, and see what kind of 19 year olds there are out there that that 
that are responsibly carrying weapons and they carry <laughs> those weapons to defend you and, 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 you and, and you're and, what well, let me let me finish Hutch. they they carry these weapons to defend you and your right to be a, a a total fucking idiot and say whatever the hell you want and to badmouth them and the fact that you badmouth these guys that are putting their lives on the line so that you have the right to say whatever you want to say whenever you want to say it it, it, it it's disgusting Michael Moore comes to mind. Yeah. But uh, toward the argument of arming people in our schools to protect our kids against somebody with an assault rifle, assault-style rifle, think back. Can you remember when you first went to basic training, Ward, the first time you ever held a rifle with live ammunition? Absolutely. Do you remember looking up at the drill sergeants and noticing they were all armed with pistols to shoot your ass? Absolutely, and they told us that. Yeah. <laughs> Every... They told us that point blank. They said the weapon gets pointed downrange. If a weapon is pointed anywhere other than downrange, you will be shot. I mean, they were forty fives too. That was no junk-ass 9 millimeter like they got now. Uh, they weren't playing. <laughs> no, but, but that was a learning tool. You Because it, it, it happened one time. It, 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 that's the whole thing, Hutch. Nobody understands the, the 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 whole thing of consequences anymore. Anymore, it's well, you're going to go into time out, and you were bad, and you're going to, you know, we're going to we're not going to like you. And then it was, if you do this, this bad thing's going to happen. Yeah. And this, you know, and if it, if you point the the gun, if you point the weapon not downrange, but anywhere but downrange, I am going to shoot you. And looking in in the drill instructor's eyes and knowing deep in my heart he had every intention of putting a bullet in me if I did the wrong thing, I learned. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you have to have control measures like that. There's so many so many people out there with weapons. I mean, that's a, a powerful force. you got to make sure the lead's going the right way. Uh, Paul Ryan did something. I don't know if he was being being funny or... Or just being serious or whatever, but he actually asked President Obama if he was going to meet the deadline to submit a budget request this year. You know, that's something else that the media is completely failing on. They should be saying something about this every single day. I mean, the budget, as we've talked about numerous times on the show, is uh, the requirements not being met, and it's it's kind of embarrassing. I mean, he sent a letter. Uh, Ryan's office says that Obama has missed the budget deadline by more than any president since the 1920s. Uh, his letter comes as former Obama budget director and current chief of staff, Jack Lew, is about to be tapped as Obama's nominee for Treasury Secretary. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, the, the Senate hasn't passed a, and once again, we're going to bring it up, they haven't passed a budget in four years. And they're not going to pass one this year either. And this That's... guy, Lou, he's the guy that, I mean, Senate Budget Committee ranking member Jeff Sessions from Alabama says that Lou is unfit for the job based on allegedly misleading statements he made to the committee regarding Obama's 2012 budget. Lou proponents say that Sessions has been taking Lou's comments out of context. Isn't that what they say every time? Every time we say anything about them, it's out of context. Yeah. Can somebody get in context, damn it? Yeah, there's no, you know, it, it, it's kind of like what we said before, you know, the the whole Obamacare thing, and we told everybody, you know, this is really bad, and we warned you, know, you. we tried our ass off, man. Well, we tried our ass off, and it's you, you guys are just haters, you know, you, you you haven't read the law, you don't understand what it's about. I mean, I heard all that bullshit, and the bottom line is, Wendy's franchise owner is blaming Obamacare for having to cut employees' hours. There's hundreds of Wendy's workers that are that are seeing their hours cut because of Obamacare. And uh, there was a, a, a TV report that said nearly 300 employees at 11 Wendy's locations in the Omaha area have lost, have their hours reduced to 28 hours a week because the franchise owner says he can't afford to pay employee health care. You know, I posted that on Twitter, and you know what I got? I got a diatribe about how Wendy's has always been horrible to its employees. I'm like, dude, you don't even get what I just posted. You have no idea what I just why I did that. You think I'm out in Wendy's because they're a big corporation that's terrible and mean to people. 
who probably yeah, it has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that they can't afford it. It's business, man. I mean, that's all it is. And Wendy's and McDonald's and everyone else is probably responsible for more people entering the American workforce than any other company. I mean, that's where people go when they get out of high school to work. Yeah, because they can get a, it's non-skilled labor. You can get a job quick, easy. I'll tell you what. I had a Baconator the other day. Did you ever eat one of those? Oh, yeah. They're, oh. They, they taste like porn. Oh, I They're mean, awesome. I, I can't have the double one. I had to just get the single one. But, oh, my goodness, was that good. I'm getting another one of them. <laughs> I mean, it just showed up. I opened up that bag, and it was greasy the way it was supposed to be. Oh, oh yeah. Man, it was delicious. It didn't have any salad on it or anything. It was just bacon, cheese, and sauce. Oh, it was fantastic. Uh, now, here's a story that uh, is not being reported in the lamestream media. Did you know that the French have deployed troops in Mali to attack Islamists? The Islamists were gaining uh, strength in Mali, and they were moving on the capital. And the French government said, you know what, man, we got to do something about this. The French are starting to find out. The whole European situation, uh, it's starting to get ugly in all the European countries. And there's, there's, cons there's radical conservative groups stepping up, in some cases a little too radical. Uh, well, I mean, I don't really, I like what they're doing, but like in, in Greece, they're like Nazi types, you know. Yeah. But uh, not really into Nazis too much. That's left. That's not right. But there's different lefts and rights in Europe than in the United States. Believe it or not, there really is. Uh, but they're starting a, a backlash. These Muslims from these desert pig countries have been invading all these other countries and showing up and signing up for welfare and just uh, driving them down, getting free housing. I mean, the benefits these people get is disgusting. And they have three or four wives. We've talked about it before. You know, they end up in these big houses. And uh, the French, I, I never thought I would be reporting on a story, a military story about the French. I just, it's not something that you would expect me to be enthusiastic about, but good for them. Yeah, it's it's something, you know, it's like two words that, that don't really go together. Uh, like French military yeah. did good. Yeah, they're like the Ita <laughs> like the Italians, you know. The Italian military is the same way. It's like I got a, a, a Italian rifle, pretty cheap, man. You know, it was it was never fired, and it was only dropped once. You know? <laughs> but uh, the French government deployed troops and air power in Mali, assisting that country's armed forces in attacks on Islamist militias who have been advancing from the north. French African media are reporting that helicopters have attacked Islamist positions around the town of Kana, which lies in the narrow part of the country between the south, which the government still controls, and the north, which is now controlled by various Islamist militia affiliated with Al-Qaeda, which have been fighting over the territory with the Tuareg, Tuareg rebels. Uh, there have been rumors in the past few weeks that Islamist forces which apparently have tenuously held towns in that liminal area, limited area, were planning to launch more extensive attacks in the region. So, so that's good. The French are holding the line. It's about time we started holding the line. I mean, I don't know what's going to end up uh, with with Libya and and Syria, and that, that's what I was beginning to say earlier. That John Kerry used to be one of Bas Assad's Bashir Assad's strongest allies. I mean, and his father. I remember seeing pictures of them sitting next to each other. And then as soon as the the winds move a little bit, now he's going to be all about the Al-Qaeda people in there. I mean, it's, uh, John Kerry is, is a flip-flop where he, he just never changed. Uh, yeah. Now, finally, I think uh, we have a story about the Supreme Court that looks like this might open up something, uh, Worried about some documents. That, uh, yeah, it's something that we talked about uh, many times. Uh, the the forged documents. We talked about Sheriff Joe finding that the the documents that the White House presented as President Obama's uh, birth certificate, etc. Well, on Wednesday, Chief Justice John Roberts scheduled a birther case to be held by, brought on by Orly. T Tights. 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 Maybe. This could Which be, calls uh, into question Barack Hussein Obama's eligibility to be president of the United States. 
Dr. Tates is a lawyer from Santa, um, Santa Margarita, California, also made the announcement on her website on January 9th. As of this writing, major news networks such as ABC, Fox News, CBS, NBC have yet to report the high court's decision to review Barack Hussein Obama's eligibility to hold political office in the United States or any of its territories. The case is identified as Edward Noonan et al. versus Deborah Bowden, California Secretary of State. All nine justices will hear arguments whether Obama used forged documents to fake identification in order to get elected as commander in chief. Edward Noonan et al. contend that if Obama had been ineligible to run in 2008, other Democratic candidates should have replaced him on the presidential ballot. Additionally, electoral votes from such states as California that went towards Obama should be deemed null and void. Well, this is big. Think about the ramifications of this. This, this, could, this could potentially bring down the United States government. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. if if the Supreme Court votes in a five four decision, which it, it's so political. I mean, it, unless now I've seen the conservative justices vote for justice that wasn't necessarily a good outcome for Republicans, but I've yet to see the Democrats vote for anything close to the Constitution. Yeah. So, I imagine it would be a five four decision. Maybe. Or maybe, because, you know. Because it, we, we thought it was going to be 5-4 five, for Obamacare and it was going to get thrown out. We, we were wrong there, too. But that was um, a little bit more subjective than this. This here, if they have forensic evidence that shows that this, in fact, is not a piece of paper, how, yeah. do, you, how do you not go that way? You know, it's more, it's more evidentiary. That was a nice word, wasn't it? Yeah. I did, I did appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, well, the other thing that came out of this story is, uh, do you remember when there was that, right before the election, there was that big thing where uh, Donald Trump offered yeah. uh, Obama a million dollars. He said, I'll give you a million dollars to a charity of your choice if you just pull, show me your birth certificate. Old small ball Obama, he should have probably said, I'll give it to you. He well, probably didn't do it because of the, <laughs> go ahead. Well, here's the problem with that. Uh, no, excuse me. It was five million. He 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 offered to donate five million dollars to Obama's chosen charity, if Obama would disclose his college and passport records. Trump said that he hoped the disclosures would shed light on where Obama was born, his citizenship status, and whether or not he was admitted to college and law school as a foreign exchange student. President Obama ignored Trump's challenge in the media interviews and refused to release the requested records. However, this is my favorite part. Comedian Bill Maher did issue a challenge to Mr. Trump to produce his birth certificate yeah. in exchange for $5 million donated to the latter's favorite charity. Maher made the offer on, J on January 7th on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. On Tuesday, the real estate tycoon produced a birth certificate showing that he was born in New York City. Trump's lawyer then issued a letter to asking the HBO host to make good on his $5 million offer. And the letter said, attached here too is a copy of Mr. Trump's birth certificate demonstrating that he is the son of Fred Trump, not an orangutan. Please <laughs> remit the $5 million to Mr. Trump immediately, and he will ensure that the money will be donated to the following five charities in equal amounts, Hurricane Sandy victims, the Police Athletic League, the American Cancer Society, March of Dimes, and the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. So... He basically said... The Police you know Athletic League still around? I remember that. I guess so. I guess maybe it's just in New York. But yeah, it was in New York, the one I, re I remember reading about. I mean, this isn't the first time that Obama's had to contend with the birther issue. On August 21, 2008, Philip J. Berg, a former Deputy Attorney General of Pennsylvania, brought a federal lawsuit challenging the eligibility of Barack Hussein Obama to become president. Berg alleged that Obama was born in Mombasa, Kenya, and that the certification of live birth on Obama's website website is a forgery. So it will be interesting to watch, and people will be throwing around uh, different uh, names to people, and they're going to be calling people crazy and, and this, that, and the other. Let's get this out. Let's get this done with and, and, uh, and deal with it. I mean, we're going to have to deal with whatever happens. I mean, if, if they find out 
that he used to forge documents and he doesn't come out with real documents like right away, he should be impeached immediately. He, he should be nullified. Yeah. I mean, the Supreme Court should do that. Well, the fact that, that, he, that he released a fraudulent document and declared that it was real, that's forgery. I don't care. That's the definition of forgery. But if, not, if you have a fake document and you keep that fake document in your pocket and you don't say nothing about that fake document, that's not. But when you take that document out of your pocket and you present it as a legitimate document, at that point it's forgery. Yeah, but I mean it's it's not just forgery if it if it Oh no, I mean if that, it that makes you not be, ineligible to be president, then we got to do something about that. That's that's just the tip of the glacier. Yeah. If they were to 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 do that. Um I we got 5 minutes and I got one more story that I had to bring up. And it's because Pierce Morgan is an asshole and a liar. And a liar. And we have uh proof of that because he was on uh he was on his show and he was shooting his mouth off about how, you know, how our gun laws are bad and how Britain is so much better off since they they had a school shooting and they just removed all weapons and there's there's no weapons anywhere and, and how much better they are. But apparently uh, the most violent country in Europe, uh, Britain, is worse than South Africa and the U.S., Britain's crime record is worse than any country in the European Union. All right. Now, this is after he badmouthed the U.S. and said, how, I mean, granted, I mean, there are places that are bad, like Detroit, Chicago. But when you compare them on a scale, on, on a rate per 100,000 re residents, the number of violent crimes in the U.K., is 1,158,957 per 100,000 residents, all right? And you know what's what's funny, Hutch? It's the U.S. Two, didn't even make the top 10. It's 2,034 incidents per every 100,000 residents. Yeah, the U.S. didn't even no, make the top 10. No, I mean, Austria is so much smaller they only have 133,000 number of violent crimes. Uh, and, and you go down the list, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can get the graphic. There's a nice graphic in the in the article on the show notes link page of Steel City Resistance at WordPress.com. That's a, that's a pretty good resource for you, especially when we get to the shows toward the end because we're so long-winded uh, on, on the earlier shows, on the earlier stories. But none of those, we didn't get into any of those stories in any type of depth. But they're available in depth at the website on the show notes page. A lot of people frequent that. But, you know, yeah, this myth about, about these European countries and their gun grabs uh, and how safe they are because of it is a myth. I mean, it's, yeah, a, it's, it's an a, absolute lie. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the fact that, that he says, you know, he said on his show, I'd love to go on there. I'd love to debate him. Did you see because, that guy, that, that guy from... Uh, from Breitbart. I mean, he was like a squirrely little guy, but he still beat his ass. Oh, yeah. He Piers me, Morgan's said, all big comes, on the other he, side. He tried to bully him. He yeah. said, you do nothing but come out here and stand on the graves of those little children. He was telling the truth. He wouldn't give up either. He wouldn't give an inch. No. No, he did good. That guy made me proud because I was starting to worry about Breitbart's organization. You know, the, you see that they had that little infighting with Dana Lash, and yeah. uh, it was getting a little little nervous there because uh, it was uh, – he, he's a – that guy right there, we need more people like him. I mean, they, and I think he thought he was just going to bully him. Oh, uh, one other thing before we wrap this up. I did some research while we were talking. Apparently, Chuck Hagel didn't bother to uh, register his domain name. Okay. So, so somebody else registered it for him. Yeah. And if you go to chuckhagel dot, and that is what it is, www.chuckhagel.com. It says in big letters, Chuck Hagel is not a responsible option. And it goes on to tell you exactly why Chuck Hagel is not a responsible option for Secretary of Defense. Uh, throughout his career, Chuck Hagel has sought to protect Iran from U.S. sanctions and diplomatic pressure. In June 2001, Hagel denounced a proposed sanction on Iran, asserting they... Go to uh, barberfeinstein.com. See what you get. It's probably the same thing. 
Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, you, while he's looking for that, you can send us an email, SCR, scrtv at live.com. Uh, go to the website, stillcityresistance.wordpress.com. Uh, Facebook, it's uh, facebook.com slash stillcityresistance. Uh, Ward always has a lot of articles, and I, we both put them up up there. And uh, did they come up with some gun control stuff? Oh yeah, that's Diane Feinstein's uh, homepage. Yeah, her her somebody bought her domain too, uh, and it's a, it's it's anti gun control. Well, the, the the one on Hegel is is really good because it breaks down all the stuff that he did. Uh, you know, all the stuff that he's come out and said. He refused to sign a letter urging the President Bush highlight uh, Iran's nuclear program while at the G eight summit. In 2006, in Islamabad, Pakistan, Hegel declared that a military strike against Iran, a military option, is not viable, feasible, responsible option, blah, 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 so on and so forth. And this is the guy that they want to be. The oh, Secretary yeah, and all the, Demo- all the Democrats are saying he's a conservative Republican and all this other garbage. Anyway, uh, tell your friends about the show. We appreciate you checking it out. Go to Freedom Connector and join Berg- or, uh, Steel City Resistance on Freedom Connector. We have our page there. Uh, you got anything else, Ward? Uh, you can hit us up on Facebook. Don't forget our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Steel City Resistance. Jump on there, do the like thing, uh, post stories. Uh, you know, give it, You know, if you post stuff there or you send us an email at scrtv at live.com, if you have some tips, we'll take tips for stories. Uh, Eric is one of our, our big contributors who sends us stuff all the time. And and we try and use as much of it as we possibly can. So if you got a chance, check us out. And don't forget to go to the show notes links page uh, for this week's show. You can see Eric's. Uh, you can go to the website and contribute to the argument of the United States leaving the UN. So uh, you got anything else, Ward? No, uh, no, sir. I am over and out. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we will catch up with you next week. Thank you very much.